Okay, welcome back. Uh, we've got the <clears throat> market which is uh, up 30 points. I mean, you know, uh, 20, 30 points coming and going just like that without very much, uh, you know, happening at all. Uh, and uh, this is uh, quite uh, amazing. But we've had markets like that before. I think yesterday was no different, although it was more secular uh, in terms of the fall that we uh, saw. Starting about 11, 11.30, markets continue to slip. Uh, today, so far, uh, it's much more uh, flattish. Uh, Okay, we have, we've got the management of Sterlite Technologies, uh, which is the next corporate on our radar. The company has reported a mixed set of earnings for the third quarter. Uh, the services business looks weak. Uh, it's down about 7.5% versus uh, the last quarter. But the optical business saw healthy growth, both sequentially and, a, and, and on a year-on-year -year, uh, basis. Ankit Agarwal is Managing Director at Sterlite Technologies. He's joining us now uh, to take some questions and talk about how things are looking now. Ankit, great to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time, uh, Prashant, this side. Could you, uh, let us start with the uh, services business, Ankit, if you could. Uh, you know, about 7.5% slip on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, about 22.5% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, and, uh, you know, a bit of about 1%, again, flat sequentially. Uh, could you talk to us about, uh, you know, how that business, what happened in that business, how is it looking this quarter so far, and what's the outlook? Sure. Thanks, Prashant. Uh, so I think first is, uh, you know, definitely overall from STL perspective, we're very focused on core being the optical business. And as we shared earlier, we're very consciously looking at what projects we take up on services from two areas. One is uh, we want to reduce our exposure from government and focus more on the private sector. And that's something that you're starting to see in our, in our order book and our, our revenues going forward. And the second thing is that we have a uh, UK business where we do services deployment in the UK as well, which is currently loss making. So that is where we are closely evaluating how do we turn that around over the next, say, four to five months. And uh, on top of that, in India as well, we're consciously looking at how to take up uh, projects with our better margins. So overall for this business, the priority is to improve the EBITDA towards, say, 7 to 8% in the near term. And then the second part is to ensure that the cash cycle, which currently is north of 300 days, to bring that down substantially. So these are the two focus okay. areas. So you're saying that you want to reduce your exposure from the government sector. Is it because of delays in payments, uh, deferral of orders? Why is it that you want to change your uh, you know, proportion between government and private? And uh, what do you see as the growth for uh, the services space? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think it's more in line with where we see the opportunities. I think uh, when we look at uh, you know tier one operators that we work with like Geo, Airtel, they are looking at really investing significantly on the digital infrastructure, especially linked to 5G as well as fiber to the home. Plus, uh, you know, with uh, areas that people will be exploring in terms of private enterprise, et cetera, data centers. So I think there's enough and more opportunities for us uh, to explore there. Certainly, there are certain projects uh, like Bharatnet, et cetera, which, uh, which are interesting, and we'll evaluate those uh, as those opportunities come up. But our prime go-to market globally uh, continues to be the optical side of business. And overall, on services, we'll be very selective in which areas we participate. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, Ankit, uh, the, I think you're guiding for around mid 20s growth, right? 23 to 25 percent. Could you tell us, uh, you know, break it up between optical fiber as well as services? Point number one, and also margins are expected to improve from these 13 and a half percent odd. To what levels should we look at in FY24? Sure. So uh, just to be clear, what, what we are specifically guiding right now is uh, our EBITDA, prof, uh, EBITDA percentage on the optical business. Currently, it's at about 20%, and that we are confident uh, we'll be able to sustain uh, through next year. So I think that's our core business. We also have uh, volume improvement coming in through our operations in the uh, U.S., uh, which, are our, which is our cable operations which are coming up as well as growth in Italy and India. In addition to that, we have optic fiber manufacturing in China, which will restart. So these are the volume drivers that we come in into next year. Uh, and one of the cost areas that we currently see is quite high is helium, which is having a significant impact on our cost on the fiber side. Uh, that we hopefully see uh, start seeing a reduction with global helium prices coming down probably in six to eight months from now. So mm -hmm. overall, what we are uh, looking at is uh, from the current 13% uh, EBITDA to start moving towards 15% or EBITDA uh, at STL mm -hmm. level. And at a top line perspective, at least from uh, the optical part, we're certainly looking at growth of 15% plus for next year. 
Okay, so 15% growth for next year and you see a lot of opportunities in the private sector. You spoke about how Geo Airtel are investing in 5G and fiber to home. So that's of course helping you with your business. Uh, will this in any way help you with your balance sheet as well, trying to understand whether there is any scope to bring down your debt? I mean, you're sitting on debt of around, I think a little over 5,200 crores. Uh, any success in bringing it down? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a, a critical driver for us is overall looking at uh, generating cash from the business and then reducing the debt. Uh, two, three elements to this. One is broadly this year, we will be doing about 500 crores of CapEx and next year we'll be closer to about 350 or 400 crores. Uh, so one is just ensuring that, you know, our peak investment cycle uh, is done and, and we start reducing the CapEx investment. Uh, the second part is certainly with the growth of optical and looking at areas like optical interconnect to further improve our margins. We do believe that we'll be generating cash. As you would have seen in Q3 itself, we were now at about 250 crore EBITDA run rate, which uh, takes us to a 1,000 crore uh, run rate uh, basis. So we are confident that uh, when we look at our uh, overall uh, cash generation from the business, particularly from the optical business, uh, that we can use the cash to reduce the debt. On top of that, we have also taken a, a, a rights issue plan uh, for 500 crores. Uh, so as that also comes through, uh, that will further help us reduce the debt. You want to give us a number? Uh, how much do you think your debt could go down by? What are you targeting, say, uh, 12 to 18 months down the line? Yeah, so currently uh, what uh, you know what we see is that from about 3.6, 3.7 times net debt we would have, uh, we want to take this down to about 2.5, 2.6 times in broadly about 15 months. Uh, so that's something that uh, we are we're focused on internally. And again, as we're just finalizing our business plans for next year, we're clearly looking at how we generate the cash and reduce the debt. All right, Angir, what about the rights issue? I think you've taken approval for 500 crores of rights issue, right? When does it take place? First half or second half of the year? So we've not, uh, I think we have a committee that we shared we have in place. Broadly, what we have shared is that the quantum is, is 500 crores. Uh, and that the promoters will be participating uh, when we have a committee which will share the details in due course. Okay, and your debt currently is around 3,400 crores, right? Net debt? That's right. So so keeping in mind the CAPEX, the ca internal accruals that you'll be doing plus this rights issue, you'll end FY24 with a net debt of? So currently we're looking at around 3,200, 3,300 crore of net debt. Um, and then obviously, as I said, cash generation next year, uh, the rights issue, uh, as well as lower capex next year, there we believe that we should start seeing further reduction in our net. In our net. Hmm. Uh, you have been gaining market share in certain geographies in the quarter gone by, at least in the first half of FY23. Uh, can you tell us what's the market share currently like? Are you still gaining ground and across geographies, if you can give us a sense? Yeah, absolutely. It's something that uh, we're very excited by. We're very uh, passionate about taking the Indian technology, Indian manufacturing products to the world. I'm very proud that now we have uh, north of uh, you know 14 percent, 15 percent share of US, north of 20 percent uh, market share of Europe, and really leading positions in markets like UK, uh, Italy, etc. So that's something that we continue to see strong growth. Uh, just to give you a sense of a couple of markets uh, like US, we believe that uh, for the next three to four years there will be a CAGR between now and 2025 of almost 12 to 14 percent, uh, and again in Europe also between seven to eight percent. So fairly strong. Uh, growth markets for us between just these two markets is about 75 80 percent of our optical sales so quite focused on you know manufacturing globally uh, with a core base in india and then selling to tier one telecom operators around the world that's something that we continue to see quite positive momentum going forward all right uh, ankit we'll leave it there good luck thank you very much uh, for joining us as always uh, to talk about the business picture overall thanks indeed uh, that's Sterlite Tech in a focus. Uh, 13 points, uh, so absolutely flat kind of uh, session so far. Uh, but stocks are moving around and we'll kind of uh, put the spotlight on some of that stuff uh, in just a bit from now. We'll take a break uh, and 